Okay, we are here at MandelaEffect.com. All right, take it away. What do we have here? Well, as you can see, this About page says it is a project of Fiona Broom. Right there we have it. Interesting name. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an online journal about real alternative, alternate realities. Check that okay. out. Okay. Alternate realities. Yeah. That is a alternate definition realities. of witchcraft. Yep. Up there, alternate memories, alternate realities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Sounds I like should... trigger words. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just looking at the woman's face for crying out loud. I mean, good night. You can tell she's possessed. Just big googling eyes like that, you know, it's mark of devil possession. Makeup, just like Jezebel in the Old Testament. Yeah. yeah. Low cut top. Yeah, they go on and on, but um the check out the sentence right here the mandela effect quote unquote mandela effect is what happens when someone has a clear memory of something that never happened in this reality okay like that's proof of anything i mean give me a break yeah i mean i remember the one time that the easter bunny visited me and, and brought me a ak-47 I mean, that, that doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. this is stupid nonsense but sounds like an altered altered state of consciousness kind mm -hmm. of definition yeah um the next sentence uh you know, she goes on to say, most many many of us, mostly total strangers, remember the exact same events with the exact same details. However, our memories are different from what's in history books, newspaper archives, and so on. Sounds mm -hmm. like a, a subtle reference to what the Vatican does. They change the history books, the newspaper articles, from yeah. what really happened. Um, but goes down here and again you see the buzzwords we're just yes. going to be looking at some buzzwords here parallel realities yeah par parallel realities exist again sliding between them without realizing it mm -hmm. yeah right there sounds like a yeah. drug-induced state yeah i mean this is just witchcraft talk is what all this thing is That's hollow dick is. experiences is another buzzword yeah. how about this possibly with some programming glitches yeah. That's a that's a over reference Pro programming glitches yeah there. that's a blatant and, reference to programming yeah and it's funny because that's what the whole hollywood thing is doing and, and they're programming people i mean think about it it's a television program don't bother pointing with your finger you, it doesn't really do anything and another buzzword is alternate rea alternate, alternate history, history again Again, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can read this stuff here, but it's just, it's crazy. And she goes on to say for the site history, Mandela Effect buzzword, you know, phenomenon. Alternate memories, as you can see on down here. Clues, patterns, markers, and theories that might explain the Mandela Effect and accessing alternate realities. There's all these, especially the, the buzzword green room. That is a veiled reference to a room where people are smoking marijuana or pot or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, or Mary Jane. And um, I remember in my academic years at the University of Iowa, um, I I actually saw what was called the green room in a frat house because my, room, my roommate at the time on campus conned me into going out to her with a, to a bar, and I ended up finding out just what is called the green room. Yeah. So that's what it entails. The green room is a reference to Mary Jane, marijuana, smoking pot, whatever you call it. Yeah. And uh, and this is where the Mandela effect came from. As yes, been saying. she is, is one of two people right there. Many years ago, I was one of the two people who coined the phrase Mandela effect during a conversation in Dragon Con's green room. So she was high on drugs, essentially, or associated with those high yep. on drugs, pot. Um, and then, of course, she goes on to say the trigger word, alternate memories that match yours, alternate realities, parallel realities, alternate memories, all yep. throughout this page. All the, you know, and again, what is, what is the definition of witchcraft? It's bending, changing, and shaping reality. There you go. So, you know, changing. So then it would be an alternate reality. You get yes. it? I mean, we're, this is witchcraft here, people what this is next we have what else on this article is there anything else on the, here well the next page is just just a little bit few a few more buzzwords uh you know visual cues and the mandela effect you know 
that's a big part about programming. Visual cues, those are triggers, so to speak, that can mm -hmm. trigger people into multiple personality disorder or also called dis dissociative identity disorder, DID or MPD are both uh, terms used by the pharmacopoeia industry to to trigger certain things in their mm -hmm. programmed slaves. Memory trigger, right there, she admits it. Marker or memory trigger, those are programming buzzwords. Yeah, uh, and so what they're trying to do is through this whole Mandela effect, they're trying to brainwash and mind control um, anybody that's dumb enough to listen to them, essentially. Right. Which is absurd. Yes. That any Bible believer should even get messing around with this stuff. It's whatever. And scroll down a little bit there, I forget. Uh, yeah, and of course they're just they're admitting, you know, they they try and play on this word game of different spellings, mean the word has been changed, and of course time travel, part of the Mandela effect. That sounds a lot like a certain organization out of Switzerland. Well, what would that be called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Should we go to the next one? Yes, the next one, broomtheory.com. Um, <clears throat> Alternate realities, broom theory. Here. This is Fiona Broom's website for a long time controversial th uh, theory that connects paranormal research, ghost hunting, fairy studies, the hum, the Mandela effect, and the related topics to the idea of parallel re realities and multiverse access. And check out the witchcraft. This is all just witchcraft stuff. And the slogan right there alternate realities. Yeah. Broom theory. Yeah, I already showed that, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you know, more buzzwords awareness not being limited to one reality perceiving reality sometimes transfer all buzzwords time mm -hmm. space locations are like doors that's another trigger word you know especially in the spiritual realm because when you leave a door open for satan to enter in even if it's slightly cracked open he'll he'll come in and he'll take over mm -hmm. in other words having occult things in your home uh messing around with occultism and stuff like that yes it's that's what we're talking about there EMF surges, you know, electromagnetic frequency surgeon surges at haunted locations, another buzzword for witchcraft. Yep. Uh, you know, door between realities. She's describing in more more wordiness, she's describing the veil between the physical and spiritual realm with the sentence the door might be literal and permit access to and from realms, you know, the world of the fae, the other side. That's a veiled reference to the veil between the physical and spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hearing or communicate with entities, IRL or EVP. Yeah, this, I mean, this, this stuff is, is th there's so many buzzwords in yes. there. We can't show everything. It's just, you can look at it, pause it, look at it. It's just, it's, it's insanity. I mean, you know. There's signs, markers, and symbols all throughout the stuff that we're showing you throughout mm -hmm. this process. It's basically Satanism that she's describing in the technical jargon, the twilight language of the whole system. Yeah, the mind control through television and movies and things as you're seeing right there. Yes. Okay, what's next? Um, next we have... Uh, the next one? The next tab, just a few more things. Anomalies, that's another cue to this whole system, the mm -hmm. witchcraft system. Anomalies, if you've heard of that term before. Uh, data points, you know, specific location, closely connected events or times, alternate realities. Another EMF, alternate realities, scroll down, portals and EMF surges. Another veiled reference to a certain organization that mm -hmm. we've already discussed in another video. I wonder what that would be. Well, same video, but it's, it's uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's crazy. So, next, uh, Next tab. So who is this Fiona Broom? Same picture as what you just saw on the other websites. Yep. Uh, oh, how about that? She is, she was brainwashed, <coughs> um, educated at Harvard in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And I'm familiar with the Boston area because uh, I went there for some strange reason as a very young girl. And I also uh, went to school there as an adult woman when I was, all this was when I was lost. So I'm familiar with Belmont, I'm familiar with Harvard, mm -hmm. and uh, her interesting location information. Scroll down to, this is more buzzwords in about Fiona Park, 
but scroll down to the other section. It's very, very intriguing. Click on more and more at the end. Okay, scroll down. Okay, so you have all these interesting buzzwords. Let's check them out. Hmm. How about Salem Witch's Pub Crawl, Journal of Anomalous Science, Salem Haunted Happenings, Hex Education, Festival of the Dead, Omen, mm -hmm. London Meditation, Shadow Mountain, Paranormal. Yeah, paranormal I mean, you can just story. go down through this. I mean, it's just the whole thing is just witchcraft, witchcraft, yeah. witchcraft, witchcraft. The whole way through the thing. I mean, she's just a total, she's a witch, people. Mm -hmm. Well, she is. I mean, she likes to go see uncovering haunted and eerie locations that others haven't noticed yet. I mean, you know, paranormal activities. I mean, you know, good night, man. Mm -hmm. She's a witch. Yep. People. And even if she, even if you were to run into into her in person and say, you know, just bluntly ask her, are you a witch? She would deny it. Just like any good Jesuit or Vatican papist would do or any, you know, high spook. level spook or high level Catholic. They're all working together. Yep. You know, as we'll show throughout this video. But just just remember, you know, the part of mind control programming is when you ask a question, the programmer either does not answer it or flat out denies what they're part of. That is part of the mind control hypnotic mm -hmm. programming of yeah. the whole system. Yep. Next. Yep. Amazon is next. Okay. Now this is a book, Letters on Demonology and Witchcraft, by Sir Walter Scott and Fiona F. Broom. Originally okay. written in the 19th century. Yeah. And she says about this extraordinary book surprised me when I saw the broad scope of Scott's research. Uh, though the original title suggests information about demonology and witchcraft, this book goes far beyond these topics. And again, she goes down through here. You can read the whole thing for yourself. But she's writing a forward to a book on witchcraft and mm -hmm. demonology. Mm -hmm. Very, very qualified to do it, I'm sure. So, next we have, what, this one? Uh, yes, that's the next one. This is another one of her websites, FionaBroom.com. What an mm -hmm. interesting photo. Yeah. Dressing in all black and everything, just a ghoul, you mm -hmm. know. Let me have a break here. Prideful pose, too, if, yeah. if I must say so. The Bible talks about a proud look is an abomination before God. Pride goeth you before know. destruction and in haughty spirit before a fall. Yep. And there's all these buzzwords. If you're familiar with the uh, buzzwords by now, you can they'll just jump off the page at you the whole way through. Uh, you know, her brief bio again says... She's related to the Mandela Effect, you know. Yep. More recently, she's gained attention due to the concept she's popularized, the Mandela Effect, mm -hmm. a study of, of alternate reality. So, yeah, I mean, and she's been in different things uh, as far as uh, different movies and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it even goes down further to say, you know, she's tied in with the Charmed yep. program. Research, Fiona's research and her contributions to over 15 books are always based in documented facts, history, and science. According so, to who? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, yeah. sparkles, a specific camera effect. So yeah. uh, your so-called camera effects that are that you're bombarded with with television and and Hollywood yep. movies and everything. And down here, that's part of witchcraft. Sure. Right here it says Fiona's experience in the field expertise. led expertise. Excuse me, in the field led to her being the model for the Fiona character in Trick or Treat, the first novel and the first Charmed TV series books. So, you know, they're taking their inspiration from this witch right here and mm -hmm. and putting it into all kinds of things on witchcraft. Uh, she's, she's, she's a witch. Yep. I mean, good night, people. I forget where it was, but there's a part where she actually says uh, she has been, she consults with people behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, here it is. TV and radio section. Check that out, that little uh, paragraph. Worked as a consultant behind the scenes on many TV shows and advised the stars of them, including those on Sci-Fi, Discovery, and the History Channel. She's appeared on numerous TV and radio programs, too, including those and listed. All these down here. Yes. Yeah, so she's a, she's consulting people on witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And you're being spellbound every time you watch TV. Even if you say, I just watched the news. Uh -huh. You're still spellbound yep. by these witches. Yep. So, 
but I mean it goes down through here so many different things you know it just and this is the one that's come up with the Mandela effect one of two people yes yeah one of two people and you have people that call themselves Christians propagating this stupid nonsense and I'm going to show you that we're going to show you later on in the study that the tie-ins well you well, we've been showing in stuff like that right. we're recording this first and then we're going to be recording other parts of it so excuse us if we're saying some things that we've already talked about in the other parts of the video next we have okay. what fairy this is one of her websites that was listed on the forward remember the Amazon forward it said mm -hmm. fairymagic.com this is a very interesting page this is one of her many articles check out the recent article titles the gnomist fairy magic book pages in progress family names and fairy evidence Daisy Hart, Messages in Nature and Fairy Promotion. Yep. Hmm, interesting. Working with television out of the UK, BBC. And here she has an actual link to a YouTube video to a channel by the name of Lisa Volrath. And this is just one of the things that this, one of the items that Lisa Volrath has on her YouTube channel that the Lord showed me. Very, very profound. You can actually see the wording, if you look closely enough, you can see the wording of the spells that these witches write and they mm -hmm. are blatantly showing this online and we will show you proof of this here in just a moment but check out this this main page in the fairy spell book yep. one of her we're we gonna do the file thing now yes okay all right now this is what right there Lisa Volrath all right we're going to do this okay here's the title page of this book that um, Fiona Broom had listed or whatever, okay, right? Well, this is a different one by the well, same. Well, it's the witch. same. Okay, it's the same. Whatever. But this is a this is a picture down here is a, actually a woman, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. But there you have a book of fairy magic. Look at the uh, monarch butterfly, yep. different colors. Yeah, you're gonna see the butterfly thing da theme Vinci. played over and over again. Da Vinci inspiration. Uh, okay. Yep. I didn't read much of Da Vinci, nor did I understand it in my mm -hmm. government school years, but... Uh, Mona Lisa, there. It's rather odd that she would be inspired by this Mona Lisa and Da Vinci stuff. Yep, these are just screenshots from the video, because we don't want to play the video. Right. But, uh, yeah, this different, this witchcraft, feminism type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you'll hmm. see that it's definitely witchcraft here in just a little bit. Oh, how about that? Yeah. The actual monarch butterfly programming visual cue or symbol or trigger photo. Because you mm -hmm. got the the monarch butterfly wings, the monarch and butterfly, she's a monarch butterfly, but butterfly. She's a monarch butterfly herself, don't you see? Yeah, and her mind that's been warped. Here Fairy is... Fairy invitation spell. Mm -hmm. They're actually showing here. the spell terminology. And notice the circle of footprints and yeah. all the butterflies and all the pansies and check out some of those just weird sounding terminology in yep. the spell. Yeah, well, we aren't going to read that stuff, but you know, yeah. But that's their own wording. There's what you saw, the thing, you know, she's drawing that stuff. Again, another witchcraft type of a spell mm -hmm. thing or whatever. Healing spell book? Yeah. Huh. Oh, interesting. Mind control picture. Mm -hmm. The Catholic halo around her head, all the circles, the mind control circles like uh, Jesuit Jones on InfoWars uses. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Alex yeah. Jones on InfoWars uses. Uh, you know. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in there. I mean, the again, we're not going to go through all this stuff. It's just. This is some ridiculous. of her weird, occultic, just satanic looking photos there. Mm -hmm. There's her her face again mm -hmm. so different colors here magic of color 14 page altered book layout mm -hmm. um you know and, and you can go th i mean look at this some of the stuff in here whatever it's the just, buzzwords that define know. each color according to the entire system of witchcraft and yeah. how it relates to to the book feminine feminine divinity mm -hmm. you know yeah okay that's witchcraft and it's funny because this Magic of Color Altered Book Layout project of, of this witch's uh, doings, uh, it's funny how it relates to the book called What Color Is Your Parachute? used by, recommended by various people in the career world, you know. Mm -hmm. Find out what you're good at so you can enjoy your job. Yeah. 
you know. There's just making the silver thing there on that page. They're putting gold on and again divination here you see. Mm -hmm. Luck, fast luck, you know, it's just whatever. Prosperity, black page. Mm -hmm. There you have light and water, the elements and things of, of witchcraft that they get into. Candle magic, magic of color, orange, you have different things there. You'll see the, well, that's a significant thing with the whole CERN deal. Again, this these uh, Jesuitical labyrinth type of patterns. Pink, red, yellow, green, and blue, purple, white, you know. I think you already showed that one. Yep, here's another one that she's working on. Rose Relic. What uh, system uses relics? Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't know what that would be. Yeah. Oh. Interesting there. Another, again, you know. Uh, and of course, we're proving all throughout this study that, you, that the Roman Catholicism and witchcraft are tied together. It's the whole thing. What? Well, it's interesting how she would paint a picture of a uh, fully initiated convent nun Yep. to define one of her projects. Yep. Patron saint of crusty paint brushes. With the halo around. Yep. Again, she's, you know, you say, oh, she's mocking the, the saints and stuff like this. Well, when you're higher level into the witchcraft thing, you actually understand that it's you're both on the same side. Mm-hmm. And a skull and crossbones on yep. those socks. Again, you know, this is this is stuff that's directly tied to the Fiona Broom. We're so back we're to back to the beginning there. Those are the different things. Right there, Fiona Broom. You know, Fairy Magic, her website. And she's linking to the video series that we just showed you screenshots from. So mm -hmm. now are we going to talk about Mandela? Yes. Okay. So there you saw the thing about Fiona Broom, and she is talking about Nelson Mandela. So let's talk a little bit more about Nelson Mandela here, show you some um, different things about this disgusting man. Mm -hmm. What do we have here first? Well, uh, interesting how he he's the recipient of a Nobel Peace Prize laureate. Yep, right there. And he's, the, he's South Africa's first Democratic president. Just to educate you on what the word democracy means. Democracy means in Jesuitical terms first world economy, industrialized economy, uh, new world order economy, overthrowing God's word from the King James Bible. Yeah. Well, That's all majority, democracy the means. The majority decides rules, not law. Yes. Essentially you communism know, you don't have in disguise. Law, you just have the majority making up their minds on things. Mm -hmm. But what other things are we going down through here? Um, in 1944. Where are we at here? 19, uh, 1944. Uh, such as? He formed the African National Congress Youth League. Mm -hmm. The hmm. ANC. Interesting. Terrorist organization. Yep. He also opened the first black law firm in South Africa called Mandela and Tambo in 1952. Where's that at? Right there, yes. Okay. Right there, talking about uh, that. The next sentence, during his time as a political activist fighting against the injustices and cruelties of the apartheid system, all that's saying is he was promoting integration forcefully. And at first he was... Yeah, apartheid there is just a word meaning uh, segregation. Right. And the opposite, of course, would be integration. Right. This is keep people apart, different kindreds, keep them apart, uh, integration, blend them together against mm -hmm. their will. So you can mind control them easier mm -hmm. if they're integrated. Yeah. Um, so. And then... But he went to prison in 1964. Yep. For inciting workers to strike, as it said up there. Yeah. And, uh, which I found, I found rather interesting... Under Road to Democracy, he was inaugurated ignog as South Africa's first black and democratically elected president on 10th of May, 1994. And a little bit lower, it talks about to create, to implement his vision of South Africa's rainbow nation. Mm -hmm. uh, let me remind you, the sodomite system, the sodomite community, courtesy of the Catholic Church, 
uses rainbows to make their mark on society and say to use it as their pride day system their pride day promotion they yep. use it for publicity and of course he received almost 700 awards including honorary awards what was that down at the bottom yes uh up above honoring an icon right there Madiba or Madeba whatever you call it it talks about the many institutions street names foundations awards honorary awards he's been given and received and everything mm -hmm. and named after the peace icon and of course okay, here's the rainbow nation thing I was looking yes. for that. okay sorry and so that's a subtle reference to perversion you know mm -hmm. in modern day speak uh, and of course the Tata or whatever Tata the father of many nations which if you keep that phrase in mind the father of many nations you'll understand here in a little bit why that is important why we are placing emphasis on that because a certain organization also calls him that exact same title yep okay next one uh, we're gonna do this one next yeah that one okay this one here is very very significant and very angering to me this is the B Billy Graham Evangelistic Association Billy Graham dot org okay this is their website Billy Graham Nelson Mandela united by apartheid opposition hmm. why would a Bible believing Christian be against uh, keeping the kindreds separate doesn't the Bible teach that a study on that and it does yes it does Billy Graham and Nelson Mandela never met, but the two have been connected in many ways over the years. Both were born in 1918. Both have appeared countless times together on the USA Today Gallup's list of most admired. Uh, doesn't the Bible say about that, uh, you know, you're beware of people that are admired and loved by the world? Mm -hmm. hmm, yeah. Be ye not conformed to the wor to this world? Yeah, well, that's for Christians, but, uh, you know, Still. We're, to, we're to take heed and, and be care careful about people that are, you know, loved by the world. The friend of the world is the enemy of God. After, and the two co corresponded with each other through letters during Mandela's 27-year prison sentence. But it's the shared passion to end apartheid that universally united these two. And you can look down through this whole article here. Just pause it and read it if you want. Billy Graham saying basically that apartheid is doomed. Mm -hmm. And this is a Christian man standing for this. But this this disgusts me, this video here. Listen to what this, this sick man says. This is Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son. Africa has lost a great statesman, Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela was a, a freedom fighter. And uh, I've always kind of identified with him because uh, I, too, am a freedom fighter. I want to fight so that people can have freedom, freedom from sin, uh, and put their faith in Jesus Christ, who came from heaven to this earth to die for our sins. He was buried for our sins. And God... Yeah, okay, enough. The whole point is, you know, oh, it's Jesus and all this other stuff. And, and Nelson Mandela, you know, he's, he's a freedom fighter and I'm a freedom fighter and stuff. Mm -hmm. The guy was a terrorist. Mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela was a sick terrorist that murdered people. And let me he tell you. He was not a good man. That's why he went to prison. Right. He was rightfully in prison. He's a terrorist. And let me tell Disgusting. you what the phrase freedom fighter truly means. Okay. Yeah. It means that. A freedom fighter, according to the Vatican and Jesuits, means a change agent agent for the new world order yeah. to overthrow the God's system of, of law and God's word saying, you know, third world agrarian society. Yeah, yeah. And a change it's, agent it's... overthrows it by violence. Right. All right, next we have Cath News USA. Hmm. I wonder what the Cath stands for. I, I don't know. Wouldn't know. Cats with hats on, I guess, maybe. You know, cat H. <laughs> but let's continue here. What do we have here? Um, let me get to the right article here. We have these things printed out. She prints them out so we have you know, hard copies. So don't try changing it and taking stuff down. And Oh, we never said that. Yes, yeah, we have hard copies. And she takes notes on the hard copies. And then we're coming in here showing you online so people can't say we fake things. Okay, um, icon of the fight against apartheid. Yeah, there you uh, go. Communist fellow traveler. Of course, this Where's is a biased this, uh... article. The next paragraph down, right there. Yep. Communist fellow traveler. And of course, the Catholics are like, 
oh, he shouldn't be called that. Well, he was a communist. If you look into him, mm -hmm. the uh, African National Congress was a puppet of the Soviet Union, is a puppet of the Soviet Union, who which bows to the Vatican's agenda. Um, you know, of course, these guys will never say the reality of, of Mandela's Catholic connections. But anyhow. And I love this down here. Yet some Americans remain hostile to Mandela. Mm -hmm. That he was a terrorist and a communist puts him beyond the pale of forgiveness. The sin against capitalism is the unforgivable sin. No, it's not sin against capitalism. It is, it's a sin to be a terrorist. Right. You know, and a communist as well. Mm-hmm. It's not about capitalism. It's not, oh, it's, it's capitalism or communism. Which one do you want? No, I don't want either of them. Amen. They're both stupid. But and the word just, terrorist has been changed to from its original meaning to now mean um, the word terrorist in twilight language actually means that a change agent for the new world order is overthrowing God's yeah, law and system. Yeah, a freedom fighter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we've been over it's that. It's a synonym for a freedom fighter or another... Yeah. Jesuitical sophistry term. Um, yeah, they get into more stuff down there, but that's, you know, and more stuff on capitalism has been a force for democracy and modernization around the world, increasing individual liberty at the expense of state authority, but, you know, it's just whatever. And but the point is, the Catholics are saying, you know, they're lauding the man. Yes. I, gee, I wonder why. Well, we're going to see why. Pope Francis lauds Mandela's creation of a new South Africa. Of course, because he's a Jesuit. Mm -hmm. Francis is a Jesuit. And we'll see who uh, uh, raised up Mandela here as as we continue in this in this video. Uh, the South African revolutionary who headed the country's anti-apartheid movement, meaning the movement for integration, yeah. fighting to replace it with the multiracial democracy, passed away on December fifth, you know, in Johannesburg after a long battle with illness, yeah. meaning. God, Not God's judgment came upon him with a long, uh, debilitating, uh, very yeah. painful battle with illness as a way of judgment. And, uh, yeah. you know, this guy was a terrorist. Mandela was a terrorist and trying to integrate in people. Amen. And he's burning in hell. Praise the Lord, he's burning in hell. Yes, absolutely. The, the things that the guy did killed over 21,000 people. So don't, don't tell me, oh, you shouldn't be cheering the guy's death and the fact that he's in hell. He's a disgusting monster. He killed 21,000 people, tortured people, putting tires around their necks and light, putting fuel inside, diesel fuel, and lighting it on fire and burning people to death. Mm -hmm. Just like the Catholic Church. Just like these monsters right here. Amen. The Pope and these monsters have done to Christians down through the centuries. And oh, let's, let's, let's call the guy a hero. He's not a hero. He's disgusting. And it's all lies. But let's you know, the Pope sent a December 6th telegraph, or telegram, excuse, excuse me, there. To, regarding the steadfast commitment of Mandela in promoting the human dignity of all the nation's citizens and in forging a new South Africa built on the firm foundations of nonviolence, reconciliation, and truth. <laughs> yeah. Talk about yeah. propaganda. I think he's forging a new South Africa built on the firm foundations of nonviolence. Nonviolence? Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, you know, the guy... You know, look up necklacing. Mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela necklacing. Look that up. Okay? You know, I mean, give me a break. Nonviolence. 21,000 people. Yeah. His organization murdered. Exactly. You know? Reconciliation in Jesuitical speak means uh, coming in with subtlety and PR stunts, public, revelation, public relations stunts saying, you know, we're here for peace. It's for your peace and safety. And yet they're there to divide and conquer that's why that you've heard the history of the catholic crusades that's why there's a current global integration agenda of the muslims yep. coming in to integrate people forcibly all across the world and truth there is no truth in the vatican and the jesuit system i was born into that there it is all based on lies and mind control mm -hmm. witchcraft yep. okay uh South Africa's apartheid was strictly enforced by the country's national party governments, meaning yep. they were trying to do things God's way, according to the Bible. Segregation is what they were about, who implemented the movement as a means of racial segregation, okay? So, and, uh, and they're not they're not telling the whole truth. Right. They're making it look like all oh, the evil government was forcing blacks into this and the, into that, and they're not going to tell you the truth. 
Mm-hmm. You know, they're not going to tell you the truth that it was not that bad and, and you know, whatever. Right. I mean, give me a break. And, of course, it goes on to talk about Mandela's being the political icon, you know, in promoting human dignity. There's no human yeah, pr- dignity. There's no... The unity of the country. The pot pom- right. also prayed that the late president's example will inspire generations of South Africans to put uh, justice and common good at the forefront of their political aspirations. Again, see the old... Uh, you know, a Jesuitical thing here, the common good. And justice yep. at the forefront of political aspirations. Yeah. It's, it's all Jesuitical talk for the greater right. glory of God, the mm-hmm. common good, that, you know. It's yeah. found in the catechism of the Catholic Church. And this Justice is, and common good. And this is all stuff tied together. Nelson Mandela, the Roman Catholic Church, it's, the witchcraft, they're all tied together. Yep. Every single one of them. You read the Bible, it goes back to Babylon. Amen. That's why they're all tied together. Again, we have Pope Francis paying tribute to Nelson Mandela. Hmm. You know, it's just absurd. He, scroll down to the paragraph on uh, in commending the soul of the deceased. Uh, right there, the fourth line of that paragraph. In commending the soul of the deceased. Sounds like a reference to the Black Mass, the Death Mass. Uh, paying tribute to the steadfast commitment... We've seen this the sentence before promoting human dignity. Yeah. And and all that we've seen the lies we've seen before, but below that it again it references Catholic buzzwords, Jesuit buzzwords, justice and the common good, political aspirations, and especially the term I invoke upon. Invoke is a word for casting a spell. Uh huh. When the Pope yeah. invokes a blessing, he is cursing you. Yeah. Or whatever he check, blesses. Check out sometime the thing of papal blessings and what happens to people after they're blessed. John F. Kennedy was had a papal blessing. A little while later, he was dead. Robert Kennedy had a blessing. A little while later, he was dead. I mean, just so funny. And it's peace a curse. and prosperity. Yeah. How about that? I invoke upon all people of South Africa divine gifts of peace and prosperity. Hmm. You know, what does First the Thessalonians say? chapter 5, verse, thir- or first, verse 3 when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Mm-hmm. So, interesting. Very interesting little tie in there. Mm-hmm. What do we have next here? We have... Uh, NelsonMandela.org. Yep. This is just a database of his tributes, honors, and awards. Let's just uh, show a little bit. Um... Nelson Mandela Day. How okay. disgusting. Yeah. Tributes from civil society and business. Okay. Let's just show a little bit of that because just to say who all has been uh, what allianced with this Which Satanist. One? And you, both, either of them, either of them or whichever one you want to do, business and even political organizations, just a quick run through. 45 40. matches. Yep. We're just going to go through this page and just show, you know, uh, this institute, uh, that's a South African connection. Uh, yeah. TV channel, CNBC Africa, uh, Black Economic Empowerment. I've heard of that before. Uh, top 300 national companies. That's similar to the U.S. publication of Fortune 500 companies. Uh, Sunday Times newspaper recognizing him. Certificate. Yeah, okay. Armaments Corporation. That sounds nice and peaceful. Sounds like a military word. <laughs> Armaments, armory, yeah. flame of distinction from new nation and whatever yep. that word is. I mean, is. again, you can look at this stuff. I mean, Tracking we, industry. There's just no time to go through all this stuff. No. This is it's just absurd. But, you know, it's just all these different people. Oh, we're just going to bestow all these different things upon him and all this awards and all this stuff. It's disgusting. The guy was a terrorist. Mm-hmm. People imprisoned. Um, the NAACP. Yep. You know, giving him awards and things like this. I mean, go down through. I mean, again. International Peace Award from the UN. Oh, how about that? Especially since the UN traces back to the Jesuit order. Mm-hmm. UNESCO. It just, uh, whatever. So, okay. Next tab. Next one. His top ten awards. Uh, let's check out a few buzzwords from here. Uh, honorary citizen. Sounds a lot like the Pope's trait of being an honorary citizen once he kisses the ground of a country he visits. Uh, 
honorary citizen of dozens oh. of cities, you know, from Rome. Oh, how about that? He's an honorary Roman citizen. Hmm. Yep, yeah, right there you have it. Par park, streets, and schools around the world hold his name. Yep. Talk about idolatry. Yep. And, uh, you know, received countless honorary degrees from uh, places like Cambridge, London School of Economics. I've heard of both of those. Paris's how we pronounce that Harvard mm -hmm. a certain person ties back to Harvard I wonder yep. who that could be yeah. you know not to get a broom and sweep things up yeah um, you know but it, it yeah it just goes down through here it's it's Nobel Peace Prize in 93 yeah, uh, he go. was he received a award by sponsored by former Libyan leader Gaddafi you know uh, oh. He was awarded the Lenin Peace Prize. Um, he pulled a Hiles by saying, oh, I don't want to accept it in 92, but then he accepted it in 99. Yeah. Uh, you know, freedom of the city of London. There's some uh, occultic undertones. Yeah, I mean, every organization around the world, in other words, I mean, yeah. presented by Bill Clinton, Olympic Gold Order, mm -hmm. you know, Sakharov Prize for Freedom of Thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, come on, people. Yep. Presidential Medal of Freedom? Yeah. You know. Peace Prize. And Frank Hunger Mello. projects, hunger projects, prize for leadership for the first sustainable sustainable end of hunger. That's a bunch of Jesuitical buzzwords. It just oh, it vexes me to see yep, that. Right there. So again, you know, the, the whole world loves this this monster. This last award, just so you know, is referring to communism, a more equitable distribution of farmland, sustainable end of world hunger. It's a Jesuitical sophistry term for communism. Yep. All right, next one. Uh, yes. Oh, one of my favorite. National Catholic Review. Uh huh. America Magazine. That sounds patriotic. I'm already feeling better about yeah, this organization. Yeah, me too. Oh, except for the fact that it's Anthony Egan, S. J. He's a Jesuit. This is the Jesuits, online. Uh, what magazine? I guess. Yes, magazine article. Yeah. And uh, interesting buzzwords here. Just 10 days before the elections, this Jesuit, writing this article, uh, was was covering this transition, South Africa's transition to democracy, the last stage of this process with this Carlos guy from the UK. And, uh, you know, so, you know, it's funny because Jesuits are like, oh, we don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, they're there on the scenes mm -hmm. to see the transition progress successfully. Yeah. So, in other words, the guy that wrote the article was there mm -hmm. to see the whole thing with happening. his buddy photographer from yeah. the UK. Uh, interesting uh, buzzwords and maker of parliament. Educated through his Christian mother and Methodist schools. Yep. Hmm. Nelson Mandela talking about Nelson Mandela was educated. Up not too good at highlighting things here. In Methodist schools, yeah, okay. So his mother was Catholic and raised him Methodist to hide the Vatican uh, brainwashing connections of his upbringing. And uh, formed in African tradition, which uh, probably means witchcraft, you know, because of the paganism of, you know, different things. Initiation name, Dalabunga, or however you Where's say it. Earning the initiation name fourth line of that paragraph yep and okay which means maker of parliaments and uh yep huh interesting again you can pause this and read this whole thing if you're interested in it um african national congress campaigning for democratic rights for blacks in apartheid south africa meaning uh feminism for black women to to allow them to vote and uh, overthrow god's system and and integrate everybody in South mm -hmm. Africa. Uh, Afrikaners National Party government uh, would never see reason until confronted with force. Huh? Isn't that something? I thought that the Catholics are all about nonviolence, reconciliation, oh, that, yeah, and truth. Is, yeah. But why would it say confronted with force? I don't even see where where are we talking about here. The Afrikaners National Party government would never see reason until confronted okay. with force. Okay. Okay. That sounds like. Like a yep. total um, exposure of what the Jesuits and Catholics claim to stand for. Mm -hmm. So they confront their enemy with force 
yeah. and violence. Let's look at some more uh, peace here. After the ANC and other liberation movements were banned, Mr. Mandela was one of the founders in 1961 of the Forbidden Group's or guerrilla wing, mm -hmm. Spear of the Nation. That sounds hmm. like an interesting uh, spook world term. Yeah, imagine hmm. that. The spear being a symbol in American military intelligence of, uh, one of their Yeah, one of their symbols. And I certain, used to be a uh, part of that. A certain radio program, uh, internet program, saying that they're the tip of the spear. Uh -huh. We won't mention any names. And abbreviated as, M as, M as MK. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Where have we seen it? As, that spear of the nation is abbreviated, abbreviated as MK. Kind of like MK Ultra. Yeah. Subtle tip of the hat huh. to the CIA. No, mm -hmm. nothing like that. CIA means Catholics in action, by the way, if you don't know. Or Jesuits by another name. No, CIA. I don't see any I's or A's in yeah. front of me, except in this article. Okay, quit messing around. <clears throat> Got to get back to it here. But, you know, yeah, I mean, it's just, again, the Jesuits. The oh, Jesuits are writing about this monster, and they're saying, oh, it's, you know, he's a good guy and all that stuff. In that same paragraph about the gorilla wing, which is a paramilitary term, check out the sentence that starts out, uh, Mr. Mandela became its commander-in-chief within South Africa. In 64, he and the entire MK High Command were convicted of treason and sentenced to life imprisonment. Doesn't that sound like mm -hmm. Vatican Germany in World War II when uh, Hitler structured his organization after the Jesuit order and Hitler's yeah. attempts to bring back the sons of God? You know? Yeah, among other things. Yeah. Yes. And, and Hitler, you know, admitted to, you know, patterning the SS, especially after the Jesuit order. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to remember the Jesuits were formed back in the... 1500s, mid 1500s, so they've been around for a long time. Yes. Uh, the intelligence, all intelligence agencies, trace back to the Jesuits. Exercise a strong presence among prisoners of various ideological stripes. That is classical Jesuitical sophistry tactic. He, Mr. Mandela, exercised. There you go. Of yep. Various ideological stripes. That's exactly how the Vatican and Jesuits come into a country mm -hmm. and mind control people into submission. Um, increasingly influenced his, his prison guards. Again, one of the Jesuits' tactics when they come into an area to uh, overthrow the current yeah. system. Uh, and firmly but calmly insisted that if they wanted his respect, they should respect him. That is very, very similar to what all branches of the military handbook say. Yes, that sentence right there. Um, that's exactly what you're trained yep. to to believe when you when you serve in the military, the U.S. military, courtesy of the Vatican. They tell you if you want respect, mm -hmm. you need to give respect. That's yep. exactly a classic Jesuit military tactic. Uh, entered into secret discussions to end the crisis. Another Jesuit tactic with the yep. South African government. How so about? The ANC joining a slow process of negotiated transition to full democracy. Again, a classic KPOC Jesuit process term. Yeah, I mean, I don't even trust the guy that wrote the article here. It's just, right. it's ridiculous. But let's continue here. Um, again, you can read this thing. I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't even know, you know, how much of this stuff to even listen to, to be quite frank but because they're just they're just going over what Man Mandela did and they're trying to mm -hmm. laud him and say that it was actually pretty good and right blah 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 so yeah let's let's okay. just go on to the next one okay um you know so how about the next tab huh inspire change meaning change agent be a change mm -hmm. agent for the Vatican yeah. and Jesuits make every day a Mandela day mm -hmm. yeah uh-huh yeah Huh. Interesting. So, and these are all tentacles of the Vatican. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Jesuit Institute, South Africa. Hmm. Hmm. Enlarging their horizons of hope. Mm -hmm. Well, that's always nice. And there's a number of buzzwords. If you look at that article embedding in the politics and whatnot, if you want to read it, you can click on the link yourself. Mm -hmm. I have it printed out, so if they change it, I can show documentation. Yep. Again, make every day a Mandela day. Yep, just like the other one. Absurd. Huh, and this is the... Uh, this is the article. I yes, here. of the author. I don't know if this is a man or a woman writing this, but uh, 
interesting how they're tied in with the spiritual exercises, taking the spiritual exercises from Rome, according to her his or her bio down at the end right there, that bio right there, Ignatian Spirituality, Jesuit Institute, okay, it's a woman, uh, Ignatian Spirituality in an African context, mm -hmm. all those buzzwords. Yep. People mess around with the Jesuits. Mm-hmm. And again, we have here, what do we have? Thinkingfaith.org. You see the little IHS symbol there. You're dealing with Jesuits again. Yep. And uh, it's disgusting. Um, so this person uh, was raised Catholic and uh, stated how Mandela had been offered compromised and right there, third sentence had been offered compromised and compromising changes to legislation with his own freedom as a bait. Well, that's more true than they realize. He implemented these Jesuitical agenda operations at the expense of, of him being condemned to hell for all eternity because he went against God's system and just had a total disregard for, for God's word, the King James Bible. Yep. And uh, cl com to to complete the dismantling of the legal apparatus of apartheid, meaning to completely eliminate segregation Where's in that? South Africa. Uh, in the same, in this, right there, when we saw the complete dismantling of the legal apparatus of apartheid, the recognition of true equality before the law, meaning integration, and social justice and civil rights movement to overthrow, you know, women being keepers at home and to overthrow God's system of segregation. You know, mm -hmm. that's what that entails there. And, um, you know, when we say segregation, too, people say, oh, you mean, you know, black people should be beat up by white people if they come into their area or something. We're not talking about violent, you know, nasty segregation we're talking about people naturally staying in the bounds of their own habitation mm -hmm. you know we're not talking about some kind of a military militaristic uh beating people of other races up and stuff like this that's not what we're talking about only the jesuits and vatican built beat people up violently yeah um and so that previous article that you just showed mentioned that he calls him the father of this new nation you know, so again, they're they're trying to copy God's word and corrupt it for their own purposes, mm -hmm. and but you it get goes down. on to to have actually go back to the other page because this is very very important to show. This is another article. Uh, yes, this one, the paragraph called "I met Mandela a few times." If uh -huh. you go to the sentence of "If you happen to be wearing a clerical collar," he inevitably spoke of his deep respect for the church, meaning the Catholic Church, the Vatican, of how the church provided for his early formal education, how, were it not for the church, he and many of his generation would not be where they were. He's lauding the Vatican. Yeah. In his praise for the church's role in his fight against segregation, known as apartheid. And then he goes on to say, kudos, essentially, to former chaplain at Robin Island, Father Brendan Long, who spoke with him at the hospital. Um, you know, reminiscing about life and everything. This is interesting. Uh, thanking him for his graciousness, generosity, service, and kindness. But yet mm -hmm. it goes on to say, uh, in the days running up to the first Democratic elections, Mandela, with friends and colleagues, that's who this sentence is referring to, attended Mass in the Capuchin Run Parish Church in Athlone in Cape Town in what was designated a residential area for colored people in the old apartheid parlance. Then it goes on to say Mandela joined the line to receive Holy Communion from the hands of Archbishop Henry, even though he was not a Catholic. Yep. But what they don't tell you is Methodist comes from Catholicism, so canonically it is a valid membership form of Catholicism, so a, a Methodist would feel comfortable going to a Catholic Mass and taking Holy Communion, because it's all in the same family. Yep. And, of course, the important aspect of Eucharistic theo theology. So, Mandela understood the Eucharistic nature of the Mass, the mm -hmm. community service part of the Mass. Yeah, I mean, when you want to get a 
any any kind of power in this world, you're going to have to bow down and kiss the feet of the Pope. Yes, and the Jesuits. The whole system. This one, um, it talks about uh, you know how people nowadays in South Africa don't want to go back to the old days. They want communism disguised as democracy to work, and. Uh, <sighs> It calls for each generation to revisit and update its sense of freedom and liberty, meaning give up your freedom and liberty for the sake of security, meaning a totalitarian dictatorship run by the Vatican and Jesuits. And uh, in order to achieve democracy, freedom of the press, and the beginnings of racial reconciliation. Exactly what happened here in the United States of America. Once democracy came in through the American Revolution, in 1776 was it well democracy came later than that they were still trying to have a constitutional repo republic for a long time right um and that's why the pledge of allegiance talks about to the republic for which it stands but it's but the, the freedom the, of the, the whole press thing is, is just... part of the constitution which was drafted by masons back when yeah. after the american revolution mm -hmm. overthrew yeah you know so that's what those words mean Racial reconciliation so, means integration by another name. Uh, and of course, transformation, that's another witchcraft term. Um, transformation. Yep. That's a witchcraft buzzword. The true social justice uh, and equality are to be achieved and sustained. You know, when you start to understand all this stuff, you'll see these buzzwords that they, this is the language of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. of Egalitarian. The politically correct. That's witchcraft Evil. because you know egalitarian women dressing like men buzz cut hair short hair pants wearing yep. women looking like men egalitarian witchcraft you know and of course they it's funny the Im unemployment rate according to this article has actually worsened since this so-called freedom via industrialization and new order courtesy of the vatican jesuits you know and employment yep. has skyrocketed. Yeah. Okay. And, Next one. And people are not voting at the polls like they, like the Jesuits want them to, because they realize the truth is out there online, and they can see who's behind this political system in this new South Africa now. So that's why even the voting system is falling apart. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next article is coming down the mountain. Okay. Trying to compare him to Moses, which is blasphemy. Right. Uh, the whole country came to a standstill to welcome... Oh, uh, right there. After the colon. Okay. The whole country came to a standstill to welcome this man back into our community. It's funny because that's a subtle reference to what happens in the military when a high-ranking officer comes into the room and everybody stands up at position of attention until the superior officer orders mm -hmm. them a new task and so uh it's a military reference came to a standstill to welcome this man back into the community uh again transformative experience that's a reference to witchcraft so they so back in the early 90s this and well they're what they're saying um it was it is it was if he took up took us all up on the mountain so that he, we could have a transformative experience like that of Peter, James, and John at the Transfiguration. In other words, he is being compared to Jesus Christ. Right. Because that's what the transformative, the man of transfiguration is what this is in reference to. So again, blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Absolute total blasphemy. They're comparing this disgusting whatever devil to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So, you know, and these are, these are again, the Jesuits that are yep. doing this. And they're, the Jesuits are heralding this guy as a yeah. icon of peace. And, of course, you know, they they make it sound like Mandela yeah. Again, quelled they're... the violent protests after the assassination, assassination of Chris Haney in 1993. And, of yeah. course, this guy that was assassinated was the leader of the South African Communist Party. So, you know, it was... It was just a false flag operation, essentially, and yep. they all throughout the article they're comparing him to Jesus, though. Right. So that's that's yeah blasphemy. Yep. All right, next one. And uh, twenty years on, uh, 
it says um, the unbanning of the ANC, African National Congress, um, and other political movements and culminating with Mandela's release from Paulsmore Prison. Well, that was basically a operation by the Jesuits to say, okay, no more segregation, now you're an integrated nation, mm -hmm. and now there's equal suffrage rights, quote-unquote rights. And uh, so that's essentially what that means. They they timed it out so that way, after these, after segregation was totally eliminated in the country, then they're like, okay, now it's time to release Mandela from prison so we can make him the quote unquote savior of our operation, and idolize him as a icon of peace. That's what that sentence means. This bit right here. Uh, and this is mind control. I doubt our friend had insider information. This is written by a Jesuit, which means that whenever a Jesuit says, we didn't have insider information, they're lying to you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, is there anything else on this article? And the slow grind, the long, slow grind of negotiating a transition to democracy means it's a long, torturous process of mind control courtesy of the Vatican and Jesuits. Yep. And they say they the company of freedom from tyranny. They're saying that God's original system of agrarian society was quote unquote tyranny because of the in unequal distribution of wealth and land. Well they have much more inequality now with this Jesuitical system of industrialization because now you have a monopoly um, affiliated with fascism and communism mm -hmm. all under the guise of wealth and prosperity and equal suffrage rights and sure. integration. So tyranny came from the Vatican and the Jesuits. There is yep. no tyranny under God's system of agrarian society. Next one. This is uh, an article talking about Hollywood's connection to Mandela. If you scroll mm -hmm. down a little bit, uh, Clint Eastwood's film Invictus. You know, huh, why would Clint Eastwood make a video of this Satanist if Clint Eastwood himself wasn't a Satanist working for the same yep. people as Mandela? Hmm, interesting. Morgan Freeman's portrayal of Mandela. How about Matt Damon's acting of this friend, Koi, uh, however you pronounce his name, captain of this athletic team, Springbok team, and the 95 Rugby World Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and of course it goes on down to say uh, Mandela threw his personal weight uh, right here. He threw his personal weight against the move to scrap the Springbok symbol as the emblem of the South African rugby. Uh, I added the word symbol to show you that it was this yeah. sentence yep. is talking about a symbol of the rugby team there in South Africa. And so he threw in his weight and it supposedly this gamble paid off via what's called because the, the game was raised by the Madiba Magic. So, you know, Madiba is a term that re relates back to Mandela. Yeah, it's like a nickname. Right. So, you know, so, yeah. again, they're just, they're openly saying, you know, witchcraft terms. Madiba magic is what led to the game resulting in the way it did. Yep. Hmm. And, uh, you know, and how this movie supposedly gave an authentic glimpse, glimpse into who Mandela truly was in this new yeah. South Africa. See, they make Hollywood is, is a propaganda arm of the Vatican, mm -hmm. and one of many, but uh, it's one of the big ones. And they make, you know, their actors come out, and they, uh, you know, it was directed by Clint Eastwood, and the actor was uh, Morgan Freeman playing Nelson Mandela to make him look like a great man. Right. That's what Hollywood will never make the Roman Catholic Church look bad. That should give you pause to think. Right. Okay. And last but not least, it is in our hands. This actually ties in with uh, some interesting pictures the yeah, Lord has given us. Which we'll be showing after we're done with the 
this uh, online video stuff, but uh, we'll show that. Um, okay, how about, uh, you know, his name, whatever you pronounce it as, means uh, troublemaker, essentially. Pulling the branch of a tree or troublemaker. <laughs> kind of a fitting name, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so to the apartheid regime in South Africa in the 50s and 60s, he was a troublemaker. True. Very much true. He overthrew God's system of segregation. Right. Uh, he's, you know, his arrest and everything, uh, I guess, was of no effect, according to these guys, because the world spoke out against segregation, apartheid, meaning the world at that time was mind-controlled into promulgating the Jesuitical propaganda of mm -hmm. segregation is wrong and unjust. And so that's what that sentence is saying. Because uh, by the time that he was arrested and then released from jail, the, wor the world had already embraced integration with open arms, yep. courtesy of the, Je of the Jesuits in Vatican. Yep. Um, so, and we're going to be talking more about this 46664 thing. Yep. When we get into this, but uh, all this different junk here. His, well, here's a sentence about his, where the number came from. Mandela's name in Robben Island was 46664, the 466th prisoner in 1964. We're going to see that this was intentional. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, if you go down a little bit, when I was among the crowd, I raised my right fist. A classic symbol of communism is showing the fist in the air. Yeah. Yep, you clench your fist and you go kind of forward, almost like uh, saluting Hitler, mm -hmm. but instead of your fingers being outstretched, they're in, together in a fist. Yes. It's the exact same salute. And uh, so... Yep. Um, let me see if there's any other things to add. Again, Poverty can... and sickness, including AIDS, where human beings are oppressed. Well, again... That those are Jesuitical terms to represent what industrialization does to people. If mm -hmm. people grew their own food in an agrarian, totally agrarian society, then there would be less poverty, there would be less sickness, because if you're sick, you can heal yourself through the through herbs that God created out in nature, you yep. know. And poverty, well, when you're living in an agrarian society, there's no such thing as poverty because everybody is benefiting from the fact that you know you're growing yep. your own food you understand how to heal yourself with what God made for you on this earth and people are not oppressed and even sure. the word human makes man into a quote-unquote God which Genesis chapter 3 yeah I've talked about that in other studies if you don't know what she's talking about there uh, Hugh is a druidic God so right Hugh man mm -hmm. is a god man essentially. and of course so know. it's it's again that's all that's other studies and stuff so i mean, right. can't get into that but you know again uh, the whole thing that we're trying to show by this i mean you can do all this research yourself but the whole thing is the jesuits love this guy mm -hmm. and we're going to show you why that is here in just a little bit but one other thing i want to show really quickly let me just uh type this in loving versus virginia okay um, I did a whole thing on this, a whole video on this. This is the uh, Wikipedia thing, just to show you just something here quickly. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Anti-miscegenation laws is what it's talking about. I'm trying to f find where the... Um, I forget where the uh, buzzword was that you. Well, the, the two the two different guys, um, the two different lawyers. Is it this guy? Yeah. Okay. Bernard Cohen here is supposed to be a Jew, but he's a Jesuit educated at uh, Georgetown University. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have this in my one of my other videos and things. But the two the two uh, men. 
who overthrew the anti-miscegenation laws here in America were both Jesuit trained lawyers. Right. So again, the Jesuits are behind the thing of um, integration. They mm -hmm. are behind the thing of interracial marriage. Mm -hmm. It's all part of their plan. And why is that? Well, let me show you. Here we have, just look up a verse here really quickly. Let's go back to the book of Genesis, chapter 11. It says here, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said, One to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly. And then, and they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and tower, and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Okay? Jump down to verse 6. Well, verse 5, we'll read that. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. Mm -hmm. Very important there. And they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down in there, confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Mm -hmm. It's called Babel. It goes into that. God doesn't want all the races together. So you have these Satanists here, and this Satanic devil right here, that worked for the Vatican, mm -hmm. and you know we'll talk about that in the other part of this video. But it just it's disgusting, all right. So that's going to be it for this online portion, and uh, we'll be showing you some more evidence here as we continue.